So this is the K Studio in Edinburgh, oh, Kentucky. It's time for the Easy K Show tonight. We break down movie news. Your host, Darth Easy and Lazy Movie Reviewer. <laughs> oh man, it's been a while since I did that. Yeah, I was gonna say that feels a little more exhilarating than our last couple of podcasts where I was in charge. It was a not a good, not a good sound for us. All right. Well, I'm Darth Easy. I'm Rainy K. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, this week we're doing movie news. So let's get right down to it. The first, we first news story is Creed Two. What'd you think about this trailer? That looked pretty good for a guy who thinks Creed is pretty good. Not, um, not the best movie of 2015. Cooler isn't gonna be directing this, but uh, it still looks pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I like the trailer. I, I I love Creed. I love the first movie. Uh, I thought the first movie was just incredibly awesome. And as I said, the best movie of 2015. Uh, also, I like that it kind of mixes in mixes of Rocky Three and Rocky Four, where. Where, uh, you know, in Rocky Three, Rocky kind of, he loses the title, and then he has to refine that Eye of the Tiger, and then also, as in Rocky Four, being, uh, Drago's son, and maybe we'll get to see Dolph Lundgren in the movie. Uh, have you seen Rocky Three or Rocky Four? I've not seen any. Right? You need to watch some Rocky movies. It's... I've seen, like, parts of, I like, I've seen that training, jog, Eye of the Tiger scene, but, uh. You should watch the Rocky movies. Skip Rocky Five, and uh, as much as you are an OCD, yeah, but not really. They're eighties movies mostly. Well, and the first Rocky movie really changed the way sports movies were made, and uh, it really changes how you look at Sylvester Stallone. It really does. All right, let's move on. Spider Man Two named Spider Man Far From Home. What do you think about this? I think uh, the title is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Because it's supposed to be a road trip movie. Right. It's going to be overseas, probably, because they said they shot a lot of it in uh, Europe somewhere. So, yeah. Um, sounds pretty cool. And what we're getting, uh, what's his name, is the villain, too, supposedly. Uh, uh, oh, gosh. This dude that should have won an Oscar, Nightcrawler guy. Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's supposed to be the main villain, I think, and uh, um, maybe we'll get a little Michael Keaton in there, too. Hopefully he comes back for a little bit of something-something. Yeah, I can see the guy who plays Scorpion in it. Maybe we'll see him come back. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll get to see Tom Hardy as Venom. Uh, oh, you never know. And uh, maybe we'll get to use a song from the first season of True Detective, which song was also Far From Home. Huh. So maybe we'll get to see that a little bit. A little, a little, the, the show's a little too dark for it. Well, we probably, as long as we don't get a Spider-Man trailer before Infinity, the next Avengers movie comes out, because if we see a Spider-Man trailer before the Avengers movie comes out, it's kind of going to bug me. I would imagine that we probably are, because Avengers comes out in May and Spider-Man in July, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Spider-Man's dead. <laughs> in the canon, Spider-Man is dead. So technically... Because it doesn't matter. All you gotta do is say, Spider-Man coming out! And people are like, I'm here. Because even one of the worst Spider-Man movies, Amazing Spider-Man 2, made a lot of money, and the movie was really shitty. It's, have you seen it recently? No. Did you, you, know, you need to rewatch that movie. Because that movie is god-awful. Alright, next new story is, Kevin Feige isn't taking over Lucasfilm. What do you think about this? Sure. They could be keeping it a secret. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I don't want them to leave Marvel because, you know, Marvel's on such a hot streak right now. I'd hate for them to mess it up. Um, at least till we get to the next phase. Let, let, let's let, let Kevin Feige at least get, you know, Avengers over with. And then, then maybe he can run Star Wars. I'd rather 
I would rather Dave Filoni run Star Wars too. Um, really, he's uh, because he was chosen by uh, George to run it. Even though Kennedy was chosen by George Lucas to take over the Lucasfilm, I would rather see I would rather see Kathleen Kennedy finish the trilogy, finish this trilogy off. Because I mean, she's made three incredible movies that made a lot of money. Solo didn't do so well, but people are idiots. I mean, that's really the way. Um, that's really the way to put it. Because right now, it kind of it's. It's kind of not fun right now to be a Star Wars fan because of how toxic the community really is. Yeah, it's and pretty depressing. That it, Clone Wars trailer today really got me back. The place. animation, though, for me, is really what, and like even this series, is really, I'm hoping it's what brings Star Wars fans back together. Yeah. But this, uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll, we have some, we have an episode nine, a couple of episode nine stories later on in the show, but we'll talk about that a little bit. But yeah, I like Kevin Feige. I think he would do a good job. But I don't know. I mean, Kevin Feige's whole thing is each movie connects to the overall story arc, where the Star Wars movies are they're kind of their own individual stories. Who they they connect to the broader galaxy together, but it's not like they're they're brewing up for a Star Wars version of Thanos. Trilogy that has nothing to do with it, and then maybe an old Republic trilogy. We got the Brian Johnson thing. Those aren't going to really be connected, I don't think, to the overall episodes. So no, I don't think so either. But we never know. It could be. It could episode of uh, Ryan Johnson movies could be set after episode nine, and could continue the story just without our main heroes because it is such a big galaxy. It doesn't have to have the main heroes. We can see Broomstick Kid again. <laughs> All right. Moving on, we have Miles Taylor is cast as Goose's son in Top Gun. Do what? Uh, never seen Top Gun, don't know who Goose is, but I like Miles Taylor, and I like Tom Cruise, so I'm probably going to watch Top Gun before this new Top Gun comes out. Top Gun is the definition of 80s fun. It's like it's a stupid movie, but it's a lot of fun. It's just Tom Cruise, uh... Fire pilot, yeah. and the new one is supposed to them fighting like a uh, kind of uh, with the age of drones, uh, drones going amok. You have uh, fighter pilots and Top Gun. It's basically a school for all the elite fire pilots. And at the end of the first Top Gun, Tom Cruise becomes the uh, instructor at the Top Gun uh, place. And then also, I would be interested. I don't know if I've heard it or not, but. Val Kimmer was in the original, and he was uh, a character known as Iceman. And and then uh, I'm curious if he's going to be in it. And then there were some other really eight things. Yeah, like he that. could he could be yeah. Um, yeah. But I do like Miles Teller. I like Miles Teller too. There were some other people they were trying to choose from. So I remember them talking about it on Collider, but uh, Miles Teller was like the most the big name mm-hmm. of the other ones. So I'm not surprised they went with him. All right, moving on. Episode nine adds Carrie Russell. What do you think about this? I like Carrie Russell. Mm-hmm. She's a JJ favorite. Um, she was in that Mission Impossible three. She had a pretty small role in there. She's that spy, you know, at the beginning that mm-hmm. you know, they, have, they go in and rescue. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to kind of like. Theorize on who she could be in episode nine. I'm hoping this is me be, be uh, speculating uh-huh. because I want to see it set in the future, a few years, like three years after episode eight. Yeah. I would love to see Kylo Ren as a master, head shaved and a little more darker, and Carrie Russell as his uh, dark apprentice. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Because we've never seen a female gone to the dark side before, really, in Star Wars. She's a lot older than he is. Well, it doesn't matter though. Yeah. You know, everybody online is wanting her to be like Mary Jade. And, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. And, you know. Uh, just be some random pilot with no one JJ. I mean, he <laughs> sticks his friends in all the little roles. Yeah. So, you know, she could be nobody. And Kara Russell, I mean, uh, I've, I've been wanting to watch that one show, The Americans. Yeah. Uh, it's it's all, all on Amazon. I had the last season recorded on YouTube TV. So I'm, I'm going to be interested. To, I'm going I'm, I'm to watch that show eventually. But I'm. I'm I mean, I'm interested. I mean, I'm kind of half lukewarm on episode nine right now, so. Yeah, I'll get more excited. You know, it gets closer and we see a trailer and hear what JJ, although we may not because JJ's so secretive. Yeah, but the crazy thing about it is I don't think when we do our top ten anticipated movies the next year, 
I don't think episode nine will be my most anticipated movie. No, no, it's not going to be mine. Most, of, I, you know, it should probably still make my top ten. But it ain't It'll make my top ten. Yeah. That's that's crazy, though. Not saying yeah, it's going to be in the top ten, but, but it won't be my anticipated either. It won't be my top two. That's for sure. All right, moving on. Keanu Reeves re- uh, reveals John Wick three. Pair of Elam. What do you think about this? I think it's they named John Wick 2 Chapter 2, okay? So don't go on the third one and start pulling a Fast and Furious and throwing numbers and weird Greek, uh, or what is it, Latin crap in there. No, John Wick Chapter 3. That's all it had to be, Chapter 3. But no, we had to mess it up, and I don't like it. But that's just my OCD talking. I really don't care. I don't, I don't think it matters. <laughs> it matters to me. It really doesn't and matter. Like when you go to search for stuff about this movie... What's easier to search up? John Wick Chapter 3 or whatever that mouthful you just said? Well, all you gotta do is say John Wick 3. It's gonna pop up. I don't know. I don't but, but just like when Terminator Genesis came out, I at the theater, uh, I said, one for Terminator Genesis, please. <laughs> or Jenny Smith, or however way you want to call it. Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to John Wick 3. I'm a little, I, I was talking about this uh, at work uh, this past week is... That, you know, John Wick, the first movie came out in, like, October. The second movie came out in February. Is this movie getting a little uh, tall? Is this movie franchise getting a little tall for its britches? It's coming, out C- coming out two weeks after uh, Avengers the Avengers 4 comes out. I mean, I, I mean, it is a little crazy. I mean, it is a different audience that's going to go see these movies. And it's going to make its money. But, I mean, hey, I, I thought you could pop a Star Wars movie in any time of the year. It's going to make money. And, uh, so, I don't know how I feel about a John Wick movie. I mean, I saw a uh, picture of it, or I saw a little video of, uh, Keanu Reeves riding a horse out chasing, uh, motorcycles. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, all he's gotta do, it's like it would dawn the plane A's whenever the A's had double machine guns on horses. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I like the second one. So. Alright. Idris Elba is born to be playing the villain in the Fast and Furious spinoff. What do you think about this? spinoff because they were the best two characters in Fast 8 and they keep adding these cast members to this movie. Um, Idris Elba is the villain. Sounds pretty cool to me. And this as long as it's better than his villain in Star Trek Beyond. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I still think it would be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this movie because Statham and The Rock have great chemistry and uh, I just, I just want to see them Teaming up and kicking ass. I didn't like I didn't like the Fate of the Furious. Me yeah. and you, we saw that together. Yeah. And we yeah, we saw it that last day we were in uh, Orlando, yeah. and I, we I watched the movie. I was just like, eh. I, mean, I, I, I like Jason Safeman. Yeah, time. I'm never gonna watch the movie again. That's just, I bought it, so. Jason Safeman and The Rock were the best parts about that movie. Yeah. But other than that, I really did not enjoy that movie at all. Uh, and I'm looking forward to what they do with this uh, spinoff because I've been crying out for a, a Hobbs uh, standalone movie ever since the end of Fa- ever since Fast Five because The Rock for me is really what made Fast and the Furious good because I think the first four movies are not that great. You know, there's a lot of turmoil between cast members right now, so mm-hmm. I doubt The Rock will be on, episode, on Fa- Fast and Furious Nine, which is fine. I don't care. <laughs> Well, maybe Paul Walker will show back up. Well, I mean, we can put him in a hologram for him, I'm sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. The next story is Gundam Live Action Movie. What do you think about this? Well, I would get excited, except for every time we get a live action anime, it's mediocre at best. I like to go to the shell, though, but Gundam could work because it's cool. It's mech suits in space. I mean, well, technically, we've had Gundam in live action movies already. Oh, yeah. Ready Player One. I really don't know much about Gundams, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, I mean, this could be part of the uh, this could be part of the Transformers, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, GI Joe movie universe that I am in. I just don't know how they're going to make it. They really need to keep that budget small because I mean, we've seen live action anime movies not going to make. Break Depends when you point it out. I, I mean, and how are you going to do Gundam on a small budget? Just I don't know. They just. Makes me think of Power Rangers. Like, 
Power Ranger cost a hundred million dollars to make. I don't know how that's possible. Because there was barely any Power Rangers yeah. in that movie. <laughs> so it's like it's that's gonna be the entire movie, right? It's gonna be gonna I guess they could make it like dark and gritty like Battlestar Galactica or something and then maybe that wouldn't cost too much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would definitely check it out because I like Gundam. I used to watch Gundam back in the day, back in the Dragon Ball Z uh Outlaw Star days. I would much rather you would I would be flipping off this thing if it was Outlaw Star because that's more of a Serenity Firefly kind of. I'm good. I don't want chip with arms in it. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, me, moving on, we have Billy D. Uh, it's returned for episode nine. What do you think about this? This will be interesting because last I heard, he can't even walk. Uh, he's wheelchair bound. So uh, there's there's little scares in space. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I really liked uh, Donald Glover in the solo movie, so that's got my interest back in uh, uh, Lando. But Lando's never really been one of them characters. He's kind of like Han Solo for me, uh, even a lesser Han Solo to me. You know how I feel about Han Solo. I'm kind of just like, well, he's okay. It's just not, he's not a force user, so that doesn't get me excited. Well, the thing about it is, bringing in more original faces from the original trilogy, now that Carrie Fisher has passed, Han Solo's dead, and Luke Skywalker will be in the movie for probably five to ten minutes, and at the most, because he's a force ghost. And uh, it's it's great to see uh, Billy D back in these uh, movies, and uh, and then, Do what? How big of a role do you think he's going to have? Probably he's probably going to be an admiral. Probably sitting in a ship. Probably even maybe sitting in the Millennium Falcon with uh, Chewie. Uh, I, and, think, I think he's going to be like, have, own a city or be retired somewhere or something. I don't think he's... Because where has he been the last two well, movies? <laughs> well, he's been I mean, off, he's been off doing his... Like yeah, but he's always been out in the Outer Rim doing his own thing. And these movies have been set... Out where uh, the they knew the first order is basically drive, trying to destroy the resistance, and he's off to the side somewhere. So, and he could be part of wherever's left of the new republic, and uh, we'll we'll see. Yeah, and, I mean it's it's just good to see. Uh, I mean, I don't think we needed this if uh, Carrie Fisher was still alive, right? But I don't know. All right. Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie is a go. Woo! What do you think about this? I have been on record probably on one of these podcasts is how I think multiple Joker movies is a stupid idea. But uh, the more I think about this movie, the more I think it could be something really special. It could be... uh, It could be Oscar-worthy. I mean, you never know. And it could be... uh, I don't know. Walking Phoenix said that when he read the script of this, it's it terrified him. It gave him nightmares. Mm-hmm. And then the studio is running as fast as they can with this thing. And Todd Phillips is a good director. I liked War Dogs. Um, and I liked the Hangover, the first Hangover movie. <laughs> um, but it's also made in a sense of being like a good fellas, make it being a being a good fellas, being because with the Scorsese kind of producing the movie as well. The Joker, such an interesting character. Joaquin Phoenix has played great villains. The one I always would go back to is Gladiator, him playing Commodus. It's just one of the one of the best movie performances of all time. And also Walk the Line, he was great as Johnny Cash. He's a great actor, so it's hard for me to picture what this movie's gonna be about. Mm-hmm. Like is this gonna be the origin of Joker? Because if that's the case that sounds dumb to me. I don't know. It could be. It could be. It could be the origin. It could also be him being a gangster in Gotham City. Uh, Rise to power. Yeah. Or, yeah. It could be like that. It could be like uh, the Dark Knight mixed in with uh, Tim Burton's Batman of him rising the have an game. Antagonist, someone to go against. Will it be the mob. Okay. The Falcones. The Falcone family. It could be Penguin at times because Penguin has control of the mob, especially if you watch Gotham or even the comic books. He has control of the mob. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely go see it. I'm not going to say I'm not going to go see it, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, moving on. Neil Bluecamp is direct RoboCop reboot. What do you think about this? I don't know why they won't just leave RoboCop alone. Um, I don't know, man. Neil Blomkamp, after Chappie, I ain't got much faith in Neil Blomkamp. Um... <laughs> 
and I just after that RoboCop reboot, which I thought was pretty good, mm -hmm. um, I just don't know. So this is gonna be like a sequel to the first RoboCop, but we just kind of wipe away everything else, kind of like everybody's doing anymore. So Terminator. Yeah. I know, it's been like two or three of our top tens. It's one of my favorite movies, so you just do it right, Neil Blomkamp. Come back into the good, if, if uh, M. Night Shyamalan can do it, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. That's what I got to say about it. Um, yeah, are we going to get, uh, what's his name, back to play Old Man Robocop? Because that sounds kind of cool to me, because uh, he's still alive, you know, he was in Star Trek here recently. Star Trek Into Darkness? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think it's probably going to be a reboot. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not 100% sold on Neil Blomkamp. I haven't seen District 9. And, uh, but I've seen... I saw Elysium. I thought it was just eh. And then Chappie was eh. So... But um, he's a very visual style director. And he is a... He was chosen really by uh, Peter Jackson as like his successor, a visual, great visual director, and that's really what you want out of a RoboCop movie. Um, I don't have the love of RoboCop that you do. I like the reboot. I, I I thought the reboot was fun. Have you seen the original RoboCop? Yes, I've seen it. It's just been probably decades. It's good. I like RoboCop. All right, moving on. We have could Uncharted fan film change everything? God. This fan movie was amazing. Mm -hmm. I like. I was like a fan film with Nathan Fillion. I was like, oh, please sign me up. I turn it on, and the opening shot where they're like hovering over some cars driving around for like it's like a good thirty seconds. I was like, what is this? <laughs> but then when we get to the house and we reveal it, but it's hilarious. All the dialogue is great, and. The action scenes, I was surprised. He looked pretty good for being old. Everybody always says, Nathan Fillion's too old to play Nathan Drake. Well, why don't we just set it after the games, and it works, because Nathan Drake is old in the, in Uncharted 4, um, and he, I think he pulled it off well. And I hope Sony, I hope everybody, it seems like there's a lot of people freaking out about this thing, and I hope it does what it did, what did, that Deadpool short did. And I hope... Sony sees this and goes, you know what, maybe we should give the fans what they want. Because I always think back to that time when I think, I don't remember who it was, Danny Boyle or some, no, whoever the director was going to be, because you know this movie's been in development hell forever, and a fan walked up to the director, this is back when Bradley Cooper I think was going to be Nathan Gray. Which would have been awesome. And, and a, a fan walked up to the director and said, did you ever consider Nathan Fillion? You know, a lot of the fans want Nathan Fillion. And the director said, I don't know who Nathan Fillion is. I'm like, how do you not know who Nathan Fillion is? And how do you not listen to the fans so much? Because every fan out there has been begging for Nathan Fillion to be Drake since the first damn game. Mm -hmm. I, it just, I don't know. And if they're not going to move with this movie, I'd rather see something like this than... Another failed video game movie, which is what we've gotten over and over and over again. We haven't seen a... See, this is what I want. If they were going... I say, uh, they feel like you have that stupid new SWAT show, comp yeah. show you're doing. I say they just kill you off in episode two. <laughs> you sign a deal with uh, YouTube uh, Red or YouTube Premium, yeah. whatever they're calling it, and we turn this into a TV show, just like yeah. what they did with Cobra Kai. I mean, how many... I mean, video game movies are so far have been doomed to fail. Eventually, we're going to get a good one. Just like it took a long time for video for comic book movies to be good movies, and now we're in a golden age of comic book movies. Eventually, a good video game movie is going to happen. But maybe we should hold off on doing a movie, and let's do a TV show based off of, maybe we do an older uh, Nathan Drake. He Each season, he goes after a treasure or something. It doesn't have to be Nathan Fillion, but... Uh, the fans want it to be Nathan Fillion. He is getting a little old for the for the role. I do. I. I. Because five years ago, I was one of those people champion for Nathan Fillion, but he is getting upper in age. So I think uh, either do Nathan Fillion or do someone else. You can still do the Tom Hall if you're going to turn this into a movie. Have Tom Holland play the young Nathan. Phil, uh, play the young Nathan, uh, Nathan Drake, 
Uh, and then you have the, and then you have someone like Bradley Cooper or Chris Pratt as the uh, modern day uh, Nathan Drake. Your TV show idea sounds pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I would definitely be up for that too. Problem is, you got to get Sony and uh, Naughty Dog behind it, and I just think they're so stuck in there. We got to TV is at such a different level than it was ten years ago, yeah. when this movie probably was first being uh, p- pitched to uh, Sony and Naughty Dog. Dog about turning this into a movie, and now now we live in an age with Game of Thrones, The Crown, Cobra Kai, where we see all these like eighties nostalgia or all this old stuff turn into these great epic TV shows. And I mean, also look at Breaking Bad. I think TV shows can get to a place where a movie just cannot do it anymore. Yeah, I, I would be good with that. I don't know. I just. I have not heard anybody say anything negative about that short. Uh, that short's really freaking good. And to me... Unless you're John Roca. He was hating he on it. He was hating on it, but he was saying that it was a fill-in ego stroke. If you... And I'm like, come on, Nathan Fillion, what has he been in lately? Nothing. He's just been if you, on TV. If you, if you heard what he did on Castle, you would probably you would probably uh, not be the biggest Nathan Fillion fan. Because it kind of hurt my uh, love of the man as well. Let's bring back Fire. Come on, Joss Whedon. Let's bring back Firefly. Well, uh, Fox, uh, Disney's hit, Fox is getting bought up by Disney, so maybe we'll see uh, Firefly. Uh, let's, just let Marvel, just get back to Marvel. <laughs> All right, final new story. Bohemian Rap CD trailer. What do you think about this final trailer? That's awesome. I am in disagreement with uh, my buddy Tyler. He says this movie looks better than that Bradley Cooper Lady Gaga movie. And I think the Bradley Cooper Lady Gaga movie looks better than that. It's a different, those are two different movies. I feel like they're going to be kind of in the same, they're released around the same time. They're going to be going for Oscar noms, both of these movies. Um, I I think it's just going to be more of which music do you like better. But I just feel like the Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga performances look, from the trailers, you know, I haven't seen the movies yet, they look like they're going to be better than... Uh, what's his name as uh, Freddie Mercury? But who knows? We'll see. Freddie Mercury. Th- that looks more like a traditional biopic. This this uh, 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 Queen movie. And I love Queen music. All of it. it looks really good. I just how we goddamn Galileo see your need? Galileo. One more Galileo. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the part of this. I'm gonna like the uh, their rise to fame mm-hmm. the most because that's what I like. I love, I love biopics. Yeah. I absolutely love biopics. I love the rides. I love the fall. I love them trying to get back up on their feet a little more. I, lo- I love a good old uh, traditional biopic. I can't... Those movies aren't comparable to me. They both have music in the movie, but A Star is Born is a uh, fictional movie. It's not based off anything right. where uh, where Bohemian Rhapsody is based off the real events. I just feel like The Star is Born is going to be deeper. It's going to have... We'll see. I mean, it is the third. It is the second remake of the original movie, and we'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I'm looking forward to both of them. So, guys, that is episode twenty nine of the Easy K Show. For more information, go to our YouTube channels and watch Rating Ages Lazy Movie Reviews. Until next week, all too easy.